Finally, the king has returned, the Manta Ocean King of version 3. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at this watch and I'll let you guys know what I think about it. So here we go. Alright, so here we have it folks, the Manta Ocean King version 3. Fans of the channel will know that I'm a big fan of Monta. I made maybe three videos about them earlier. So I was really excited when they announced that they were going to come out with a version 3. I owned the version 2 previously in a gilt dial with no date, which I was a fan of, but I ended up moving on from it. Like I do with a lot of watches. Um, so the thing is, uh, when they when they announced and showed the version 3, a lot of people were like, oh, it looks just like a submariner and you know it's not very original design so we're going to be talking about this watch going over the measurements going over everything and i'm going to tell you i'm going to give you a couple reasons why this is like a submariner why this is not like a submariner and how i think that um and just a few things that i would like to see different from these models and maybe some things that they can improve on but this is a i guess they're more like an independent brand they're still a micro brand in the eyes of some people but um, i'm just giving you the positives and negatives i'm not gonna hold anything back even though i am a fan of this brand so come with me and we're gonna get to know more about the ocean king so first and foremost we're going to go over the measurements here 40.5 millimeters in diameter a very a very tight uh, 12 millimeters in height we have 48 millimeters lug to lug and 20 millimeters lug width here these are pretty much the kind of goldilocks measurements the measurements that you want 48 by 40 12 is a very thin watch um, so they pretty much have perfect dimensions they know what kind of dimensions people are looking for and this is a very very good wearing watch so when i first got my hands on the sky quest i was very impressed with the the design and the build i was like wow this is a very nice watch so when I opened up this one for the first time, I wasn't as shocked. I wasn't as impressed because this watch is kind of similar, very similar to the SkyQuest. So I'm sure you can have an Ocean King and a SkyQuest in your collection, but I feel like they're very derivative from each other. They look kind of the same. So people do say that the Sub and the GMT are just the same watches, just a little bit different in their uh, design. And to me, they are very different and very unique. Uh, they they kind of share the same case. So maybe that's what uh, Manta is doing here. Enough about Rolex. Let's go back to the Ocean King here. So like I said, I had version 1 before. The differences was that the indices went all the way to the Rehot. And they were kind of etched into the Rehot here. These ones, they push the indices in. And they have a minute track going all the way around. And um, the bezel is different. What was a little bit more unique about the other one, it had 15, 30, and 45 as the numbers. This one, the bezel does kind of go to a more traditional countdown bezel here uh, for dive purposes, but really nobody's diving in these watches. And just let me know if you have uh, gone on a dive with a uh, Monta Ocean King. That'll be awesome. You know, send me some pictures. Let me check it out. So other things that I... Um, one of the new features on this Manta Ocean King is they said they have a patent pending 120 click bezel. So let's go ahead and uh, take a listen here. The bezel action, as you heard, is very nice and crisp. It, it is a nice sounding bezel. It is one of the better bezels I have uh, encountered. It does feel and sound just a very very little it does feel and sound just a little hollow kind of reminds me of my omega seamaster it's not as um solid sounding as a rolex or even a tudor but it is a very nice bezel action one of the ways that i like to test the bezel action on watches is just give it one click and if that one click kind of sounds the same the whole way through, then I think it's a very good type of bezel action. I, I don't know if, um, 
It's hard to explain, but some bezels kind of like need maybe like four or five clicks just to like get it going. And it feels very like cheap and like twangy. You know, if you just click it once, it you can tell it's not really like going through. But once, once you start turning it all the way, it does have like a nice sound, nicer sound to it. But that's just how I feel about maybe some Seiko bezels and some other bezels that I've got my hands on. I, I tried the Sin... Um, I had my hands on the Sin T50 and that bezel action was not good at all. It was very reminiscent of a Seiko. And I'll have a, maybe I'll, I'll make a video about that watch um, in the future here. So bezel action is nice and crisp. In the older model, they had a 60 click bezel, which I thought was amazing. It was very like hard to turn, but it just made that sound just really snap. It was like pack, 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 pack which sounded very, very good to me. But this one also has a very nice bezel action. One of the things that I kind of don't like about this model, and I've seen it on a couple other posts too, is that I'm not sure if it's the size of this triangle or the distance or the height of the rehot that some, see, I can even see it in the camera here. Sometimes the bezel looks like it's misaligned. Uh, somebody was selling um, another model on Reddit that they said they had a misaligned bezel. I've seen it on post that sometimes when you take a picture of it, it does look misaligned. And at first, when I first got this watch, I thought this one was misaligned as well, but I believe it is aligned perfectly, but it either, either is the rehot or the triangle or something that's making the, the bezel look off to me. So, I'm not sure how they can remedy the situation here. Like on this watch, there's like no question that the alignment is on point. And let's see, I have another watch here that I haven't questioned at all if the alignment was on point with this one either. So the Rehot, I guess it is a little bit taller on the, the Monta here, but for some reason, I think it's, and just for some reason, it looks a little bit off at times to me. So maybe this is the, I saw two examples of it being off. And of course, Monza has great customer service. They're gonna send it. If you send it back, they'll get back to you in, in a couple of weeks. They're very responsive on their website, but something about the rehot or the triangle just makes this thing look a little misaligned here. So another thing that um, Monta is well known for is their bracelets. They say they have the most comfortable bracelet on the planet. I already have a, a video talking about how comfortable their bracelets are. It's a very comfortable bracelet. It has a nice system. This one, they have a new a new design. This is their, uh, I guess, maybe it's their fourth version of the bracelet because first one had holes, then it came out with the micro adjust, then it came out with a little more curvy clasp. But this one, has the curve, the clasp is a, a decent length. It has to be because of the micro adjust here, but um, I, I think it's very good looking, but these ends being polished here, I think this is um, for any watch. I don't think any watch should have any type of polish on the clasp. It just make it brush so the scratches aren't as pronounced, but even at the brush point, this is, I got this watch uh, secondhand, so it does have some scratches. This is not even from me, but um, this polished edge is going to get just demolished by scratches soon. And another thing I do have about this um, this bracelet, the clasp, the fold-over part is very thin. A lot of people were complaining about the Tudor's. Um, Tudor shield is pokey and it'll get... Um, you know, it may hurt your fingernail or whatever hurt your finger. But this thing is thicker than the Montas. And the Montas, I think, is it being so thin that it would get under a nail and it may um, it may be a little bit uncomfortable when you're taking it off versus this one because the thickness here and it's more smooth. This one is kind of sharp and it's kind of... Um, yeah, this one is just kind of sharp here. So that's a couple of things I have about the bracelet. And I think we have six positions of micro adjust, just like a glide lock here. Um, it's not as good as a glide lock system, but I appreciate uh, micro brand and smaller brands having micro adjust systems. 
So I think this goes out to uh, 12 millimeters here for the perfect fit. And uh, it does come with half links. I don't really like to use half links just because um, I don't like the way it looks on the watch. I would rather have a micro adjust with full links just for like the symmetry of a watch. So um, they use the half links for a perfect fit. I would put it on this side so it's kind of covered in the, um, the clasp here. But if it's on this side, you're gonna kind of see a little small half link and then the rest of the links going back up. But great adjustment, uh, nice comfort, just uh, little things, this uh, polished edge here and the clasp uh, being a little bit sharp down here. And um, finally, the Zalita SW300, but they mark it as the M22 Monte Caliber. They raised it from 40 to 56 uh, hours of power reserve, which I do appreciate. And what I do really want to know is that, is there a Salida or ETA movement that has 70 hours? Because I think people should start using that. I'm a big fan of longer power reserves, and I would really like at least a 70 in these kind of watches that you're spending over $2,000 on. So last thing I would like to talk about is the price of this watch, $2,550 at retail which is steep for a watch like this. If you're looking on the secondary market, you can find a Black Bay 58 for the same price as a brand new Manta. You know, it's gonna be a little bit older, out of warranty, but those watches are great. Those watches are classic. This watch is great too, but I don't know if these watches can really bang with the big boys yet, you know? I will do a comparison of watches divers at different price points so use this one this uh, Tudor Black Bay 41 is going for under 4,000 so maybe say 3,500 on the Oyster maybe a little bit more on the um, maybe a little bit more on the Jubilee here but this company is creeping up into price and I they do make a very very well made watch and I talked about it before in other videos. It is not worth the full retail price in my opinion. I feel like these prices need to come down. And to be honest, I don't think it can compare with some other brands at the moment. Like Tudors are now being sold at less than retail. You can get a discount 10, 20% on Tudors off the bat. So you're looking at this from them, which they only discount on the initial release, which maybe be like two, 300 bucks. So maybe you could have got this for $2,250 for the six months or so they're doing the pre-sale on the pre-release. But then you have your money into this watch and it's not gonna get released for a few months or so. And that's the thing is when you can get something for maybe, so right now you're gonna have to pay the 2550 but then you can get a discount on a long jeans, you can get a discount on a Tudor. So I feel like the price gap between this and a Tudor and a long jeans, well, I shouldn't talk about long jeans because I really haven't gotten uh, my hands on it. So we'll just talk about the Tudor. Would you want to spend 3,000, 3,500 on this or 2,500 on this? I mean, let's say this was 1,800 and this was 3,500 with a discount. I would like to lean more towards this because you're saving, this will be half the cost because that's what a micro brand should be. Way less than, um, you know, way less than a retail brand, but having just as high quality as a retail brand. So I, so that's just what I feel about the pricing. Um, if you check out Monta's website, they have raised the prices on a lot of things. The Atlas um, is now $2,385. And I'm gonna show you guys some screenshots from, um, I actually pre-ordered the Atlas when it came out, I believe it was in 2019. Could have been, uh, no, yeah, 2019. It was in 2019 where they released it and I believe it was only $1,600. So the same, so $1,600 at pre-sale, so maybe $1,800, their full price retail, but now it's $2,300 and they didn't do anything to the watch. They didn't upgrade it, they didn't add anything. So that is something that is kind of disappointing about this brand. I know things cost more, everything costs more, but the value 
for Manta is not really there for me. And then finally, let's look at this watch versus the sub. I mean, there's been other videos about it, um, talking about how Manta looks like a Submariner or it's a Submariner clone, a Submariner homage. Even when I took this to work and I showed some of my coworkers, they're like, oh, looks just like a sub. But now let's, but the thing is like, if you have that, um, that thought when you first see it, you're never going to unsee it. You're never going to be like, oh, actually, no, it doesn't look like a sub, you know, but let's look closely at these two models and where do you see the similarities? The bezel, maybe the, that's it, right? The bezel, I mean, the bracelet is, I mean, there's a lot of three link bracelets out there. This is not exactly like an oyster bracelet. The clasp, yeah, not really. I mean, there's a lot of different elements to these two watches that are different. So is it the crown guards? The crown guards are more pronounced here. The crowns are a lot more smooth here. Uh, the crown itself, different, uh, you know, the crown and the Monta logo. Is it derivative from the Submariner? Maybe. But is it an homage? I don't think so. It's not like a Ginault Ocean Rover or whatever model that is that looks exactly like a sub. Um, so I think this is a, a lot more unique than people think. But that's, the thing is, you're never going to change somebody's impression about it if that's what they see when they look at this watch. They say, oh, looks like a Submariner. Does it? I don't think so. So that's my in-depth review of the Monta Ocean King version 3. Again, I think it's a great watch and I would, um, I'm going to be wearing it for a while. This has been taking up all the wrist time. Even if after all the negatives that I did say about it, I mean, I really do appreciate the brand and you know, that's what it watches are for. It is to be critical and I, I do like to support the brand when I can, but I do want to purchase a watch. I, I've already purchased two watches directly from them. So I do support the brand, but uh, some of the pricing is getting a little out of control. But if they do come out with a green version of this without the red um, Ocean King tech, so it would just be white or maybe some other color, probably just white, I will purchase it from them directly. Mark my words. And thanks again for watching another episode of Hawaiian Horology, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Shoots! Thank you.